Hey everyone, I am Baba Khandalwal and I welcome you all to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will be going over the collections in C Sharp. But first, let me remind you that we have our daily updates on numerous technologies. So if you are a tech geek looking for the latest technological innovation, then try subscribing to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss an update on Simply Learn. So now, without any further ado, Let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We will begin our session with a discussion on what are collections. Then we will have a brief discussion on types of collections. Following that, we will discuss generic collections and the non-generic collections with the help of a demo. Finally, we will end this session with a few pointers on collections. So, Let's get started with the discussion on what are collections. First, collection classes are specialized data storage and retrieval classes. Stacks, queues, lists, and hash tables are all supported by these classes. Then, collection classes perform a variety of functions such as dynamically allocating memory to components, and retrieving a list by objects by an index among others. At last, these classes construct collections of object objects, which serves as a foundation for all data types in C Sharp. Next, let's go over the types of collections. There are majorly two types of collections defined. First, the generic collection and the non-generic collection. Let's discuss them in detail. First we have our generic collections. A generic collection is a class that provides type safety without requiring derivation from a basic collection type. And the implementation of type specific members, the collection classes, are found in the namespace system.collections.generics. Internally, Generic collections store elements in arrays of their respective types. That is, it can only have, if, if the collection is of int type, then it can only have elements of int type. Now, there are several generic collections available. First, list. Then we have dictionary. Next, sorted list. Then we have stack. And finally, queue. Now, let's go over the codes on each of them. Now, let's go over some generic functions. First, start with a generic list. Here, to declare a list, we use list end and then the name for the list. Then we use new identifier to start a new list. This is the basic syntax to create a list. Now, to add a list, we use an add function. So we are using gen list dot add to add 30 in this list, then 60, then 90, then 120. After that, we are using this for each loop to print out this list. Now let's print it. As you can see, it has printed 30, 60, 90, and 120. Just in the order we printed in this list. Let's close this. Now let's see dictionary. Here we have this basic code for the dictionary. To initialize the dictionary, we use keyword dictionary. Then in Angular brackets, we define the type of both the parts of the dictionary. One is key and one is value. Then we have dictionary name. Then we again use new keyword to finally start this dictionary. This is the basic syntax to create a dictionary. Then we have this function add to add the data in the list. Note that we are giving two values. One is int which is given here as key. Then we have here as string. Now 
we are using a for each function where we are asking a key value pair and naming it key kyp in this dictionary key value pair means key and value pair that is we are basically accessing both the values together we can simply write key here key kyp in dictionary and we can get the same thing then we are using the right line command to basically printing out the key and the value separated by this space let's save it and run it here you can see we are reprinting first the key one then the value soda same goes for the burger fries and other drinks now let's go over our sorted list now for the sorted list we also have a key and value pair now to make it a little different i used string here instead of int now to create a sorted list we use a sorted list name then we give two l uh, then we can give two different data type for the two different values then we have sorted list s list as the name then we have new keyword then we basically create this then we use add function to add the value key and value to this list then we use key value pair in a for each to print out the values let's see it let's close this so that we can get new data let's save it and run it and here as you can see we are printing out american fry american burgers french fries lime soda onion ring in the same order as they are added now let's go over a stack now for a stack we are using stack then we are only giving one value since stack has only one value one type of data in one time so we are giving a string values to the stack i named it stack just to make the pun then we are using new keyword and this is the basic syntax for a stack now for stack to enter the values in the stack we use push command now if you remember a stack we basically push a value above another so basically if we have given rare first that means it will be at the bottom because first we are entering rare then medium rare will go up above rare then medium will go up up mid medium rare then well done will be on top so when we will print this out it will basically print well done first then medium then medium rare then rare last and we are using this for each loop to print out this stack let's run it and sure enough as you can see we are first printing out the well done then medium the medium rare then rare now let's go and try out queues here queues is also using only one type of variable so we are using string here i have named it gen queue then we are using new keyword to create a new queue and this is a complete syntax to create a queue here to add new data in a queue we use n queue so we are entering mark bill xavier michael now and we are also using a for each loop to print out the values for this queue let's run it and here it is printing mark bill xavier michael just in the way it was queued 
now we have discussed all of these generic lists so now let's get back to our slides Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1,000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Next, let's discuss a non-generic collections. Non-generic collections are specialized data storage and retrieval classes that handle stacks, queues, lists, and hash tables. The system collections namespace contains the non-generic collection classes. Non-generic collection classes store elements in object arrays internally, allowing them to hold any type of data. So basically, same collection can have different type of databases. Now, there are various types of non-generic collections, such as array list, hash table, then we have sorted list, then stack, then finally we have queue. Now, let's all go over a few of these codes to explain each of these collections. And here we have a non generic list. So, let's go over array list first. Now, here to declare an array list, we use array list keyword, then we gave it the name AL, then we have new keyword, then array list. If you notice here clearly, unlike generic list, we are not giving any kind of data type. So basically allowing us to use different types of data type. Next, in the next line, we are declaring a string which tells us to like, share and subscribe. So you also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this video. Next, x equals to 11. This is an integer type of variable. Then we have a date time variable, d, which basically is telling us to parse in a date time format this 3 December 1998. Then we are using add command to add all three of these in this array list. Then we are using for each to print out this array list. Now let's run it. Now here as you can see it has printed out this string like share and subscribe. Then it has printed out this integer type. Then for the date time since we asked us to parse this in the date time format so it gave us 0, 03. It replaced the December by 12 and then given us the year 1998. After that, it has also giving, given us the time. It has given us a default time of 12 a.m. since we didn't provide any date, any time from our side. Now, let's check out hash tables. Now, in the hash table, we use hash table command. Then we gave it a name. Then we are having the new keyword to finally create a complete hash table. This is the basic syntax to create a hash table. Now we are using add command to add these values and hash table has two pairs, a key and a value, just like dictionary. Now I use the same data set for the dictionary which I used for the hash table to make a comparison. Then we have for each dictionary entry to basically print out these h key and h value. Let's run it. Let's close it first for better clarity. Now let's run it. Here, as if you look closely, it is printing out four onion rings first then three fries, then two burgers, then one soda. And why is that? Because in hash table basically insert the data on one above the other just like a stack. Now that's the bigger difference between a dictionary and a hash table. Now let's go over a sorted list. Now in a sorted list 
we are using sorted list command now if you are noticing something very simple we are not giving them any kind of idea on what could be our keys and what could be our values data types of these so basically we can have different types of data types here as well now i'm using the same data set which i used here in generic sorted list to make a simple comparison if you look closely we are using so that you can understand here in generic we were using these data types to create a sorted list whereas in non generic we are not giving any data types but we are using the same data type set now let's try and print this we are also using dictionary entry to get uh, access each of these values if you had noticed in sorted list we used key value pair but in non generic we are using a dictionary entry let's run it and it has printed out american burger french fry lime soda onion ring then next in our list is stack here we are also using stack but we are not giving any kind of idea on what kind of values it will be to make the pun i again use stack then give out the values as rare medium rare medium and well done now let's try and print it here as you can see it is printing out well done medium medium rare rare because it's a stack so it will always have the last value added as its first now let's discuss queues and here queues we are using queue keyword to define a queue then a name then a new keyword and this is a complete syntax for a queue in a non generic collection here we are using n queue to print out to add the data in the queue then we are using object to get the values from this queue now let's run it and here as you can see we are printing mark phil xavier and michael now this is all for these codes let's get back to our slides and finish up this session finally let's conclude this session with some pointers on collections first in most circumstances it is preferable to utilize generic collections since they operate quicker than non generic collections and help reduce exemptions by displaying a compile time error then a non generic collection type are found in system dot collections namespace while generic type collections are found in the system dot collections dot generic namespace next c sharp also has several specialized collections that are tuned to deal with a specific sort of data type which may be found in the system dot collection dot specialized namespace at last the collection class support a null as a valid reference type value and enables redundant elements like some duplicate elements and this was all for today's session hope you guys found it informative and helpful if you like this session then like share and subscribe if you have any question then you can drop them in the comment section below thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from simply learn Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.